Finally, Spence has come back to talk basketball. What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sports topic, and today we're going to talk some basketball. Orlando Magic basketball. I know a lot of y'all out there waiting, but when Spence, man, when you gonna, bro, when you gonna come back and talk some basketball? I told you it was coming. You ain't gotta worry about that. We gonna talk some basketball, but before we talk about actual on the court basketball, I haven't got a chance to address this. I was a little busy throughout the week, so I haven't got a chance to address this via YouTube. I did address it on Twitter and Instagram. We gonna talk about our boy AG, how he got robbed in the dunk contest because. You know, it's the second time he got robbed. People, I think, are missing the actual point. Because I've seen a lot of arguments for both. And this is the point that no one that I've seen has brought up. Everything they talk about with him not clearing Taco Fall, because Taco Fall dunked, uh, whatever the case may be, all of that's completely irrelevant. The reason why? AG had straight 50s. Every dunk AG did up until that last dunk, with straight fifties, and I don't understand. Like I think the whole the way they do the dunk contest is a flawed system. It's it's a, it's a complete flawed system because when have somebody ever just like you play basketball? You got four quarters in, in basketball, right? When has someone ever scored 35, 30 points in the first quarter and the opposing team only scored twenty? So that means they, it's a difference of 10. And then both the second, third, and fourth, they both tied with 20 points. The team that scored 30 in the first quarter still is up by 10, correct? They still win the game because they have t more points. That's what happened. AG had 50s all the way through. AG had, like like he said, he said, you only pay me for four dunks. He had four fifties. It was a wrap. It, it, it shouldn't even went to the taco fall dunk. Is that 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 dunk shouldn't one when he caught when he caught that ball and spent and then dunked it was over. Once he did that dunk, it was a wrap. It shouldn't even went to the one where he kind of copied him a little bit, and it shouldn't have went to the show, shouldn't have went to the Taco Fall dunk. It was a wrap. And then also the whole thing if if they keep going to fifties, they they're gonna keep on going. That's stupid. Like AG said, you pay me for four dunks. Now maybe if they both had tied the four dunks, they do a fifth dunk. Once they're fifth dunk, then let the NBA decide or let them have co-champions, whatever the case may be. This whole they keep on dunking until somebody's not get fifty, so the judges will on court. We're not gonna give them both fifties no matter what because we are gonna make sure that we gonna give it a tie and let the NBA decide. It's stupid. It's, that's a flawed system right there. That if it's keep on being fifties and just keep on going, that's stupid. But most importantly, AG had five fifties. It's a wrap. He won. He had five fifties. It's a wrap. So it shouldn't even went to the taco fall dunk. Uh, Dad Jones Jr.'s first dunk was a was a forty six, forty five. So AG AG bested him. AG bested him. And with, from the first dunk on, straight fifties into the taco fall dunk, he won. How do you get five straight fifties and still lose a dunk contest? That's that's absurd. That's stupid. This is just dumb. But I digress. Like it's it's the same because it's it's really hard because it's the second time he he's got cheated out of the dunk contest. In my opinion, I think his 2016 performance was a better performance, and he's one of the greatest dunkers that I've ever seen. Uh, in game, I mean, uh, the game against LA a couple of weeks ago, he had his own damn dunk contest in that game by himself, and then especially the way he's creative with his dunks in the dunk contest, and he's never won one. And like Shane Sharp brought up a good point. If Aaron Gordon wins this dunk contest, then maybe next year have only three three guys. Him, Zach Levine, Zion. Let's get it. Put a meal up on the table. Let's get it. And you that's how you start bringing more NBA news flags. That's how you start bringing more excitement. You got a star in Zach Le you got a star in Zion. You got two guys who you could arguably say had the best dunk contest against themselves, uh, the, the the best dunk contest back in 2016. Two champions, everybody will watch. That's something that's definitely intrigue. That's something that everybody would watch. But let's talk about some on the court basketball. Cause I got call some of y'all. I got call some of y'all fans out. Cause I seen a lot of y'all, a whole bunch of y'all, was out there tweeting and, and upset that AG ain't winning dunk contest. Talking about he got screwed, he got cheated. Which is all true. But the same ones y'all doing that be the same people I'll be seeing on Twitter and on, on the message boards and, and uh in the chats and stuff like that. Talking about man, AG's a bum. 
Oh, we need to get rid of Gordon. Every time it's a trade thing, y'all ready to give up on Gordon. But y'all y'all fighting tooth and nail about him not winning this dunk contest. Y'all upset. Y'all highly pissed off. But yet, every night, y'all trying to get rid of him. I, I, I just don't get it. <laughs> I just I need some clarification on that standpoint. Because this is the deal. Something, I, um, Magic Wave kind of brought this up uh, maybe about two weeks ago. But it was something I've been saying via offseason. Go back to my videos before free agency, during free agency. I've been saying the same thing during the playoffs last year. That this team, and it's, it's even more now with Markel Fultz, that this team is not built correctly. Not only is AJ a a get robbed Saturday, AJ gets robbed all year. Because the way that we play basketball does not benefit him because of the pieces that we have. Him and Nikola are not a good mix. It's it's not a coincidence that we're back in uh, 16, was it 16, 17? Yeah, 16, 17 season was AG's best year. It was one of Nikola's worst years. I think it might have been his worst year as a starter for the Magic. And then last year was Nikola's best year and was AG's worst year as a starter. It's not a coincidence. They don't miss together. You ever go back and look at the games? Now, I know the game against Atlanta, both of them had a good game. But if you go back and look at the games, either one's having a good game and one's like, if Nicola's getting 20, uh, uh, 24 plus, so between the 24, 25 range, AG's having like a 13 night, 11 night. But when AG is doing his thing, getting 25, 26 points, nine times out of 10, Nicola is getting like 15 points. Because we run a, when, when, when you run the ball through Nikola, it's a slow pace offense. It's very slow. And, and it, it, the game di the dictates and benefits for him. That's cool. But when you got AG and now Mark Hill Foles, and when they're trying to run a fast pace up and down the court in transition, it's, uh, um, um, Mark Hill slashing, and then AG cuts, that benefits their type of style. That benefits their game. That's the reason why they look better. They look crisper. That's why then once AJ start getting those dunks in, that's when AJ starts knocking down shots like he did against uh um what was our last game? Detroit. When he knocked down those two critical threes to tie the game. I think did he hit the three to take the lead? Now, I know Nicola makes some shots too, but AJ gets in that rhythm once he starts knocking down them dunks and getting them dunks to start smashing over the boards. You the game is benefited for him if they run fast-paced offense. And that doesn't benefit Nikola. And to be honest, in today's NBA, you don't win. Look at the Rockets. You don't win championships with Biggs being your best player. I mean, that's one of the reasons why the Rockets went small ball. Not, we, that's a subject for a whole other thing. Like, if, if, that was, if that's going to work as far as winning the championship. But the days of what, when we had the White and back in the day is Shaq. In uh, days of bigs leading teams to the finals, it's not that. I mean, you got Giannis and you got uh, maybe Embiid and some dominant bigs, but they're beastly. They're beasts. They're, they're, they're dominant. The key word in that sentence is dominant. Nicole is not. And then, like I said in the playoffs, he didn't show up against Toronto. Aaron Gordon was the best player against Toronto because neither the Terrence Ross. Nobody showed up against Toronto but A.G., and he didn't show up, up for all five games. It, like, he 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 was he was disappearing like maybe like one or two of them. But for the most part, for the most part, he was the best player. In the, he, was, he was definitely the best player in the playoffs against, against Toronto. And he was being guarded by uh by Kawhi. I know people saying we well, you know uh um um uh, Nikola had uh, uh Siakam on that was the that was the whole talk during Frazier when I like I didn't want to pay him. And, like well, remember Nikola had Siakam on him. Well, AG had Kawhi Leonard. Who won the Finals MVP? Like, what are we talking about? Like, they both had good players guarding them. Both good had good defender, good defenders guarding them. AGs just did more. It, and like I said, the way this team is constructed from a personnel standpoint benefits us to play that up and down ball outside of Nicola. Like, so I think the, the best, the, uh, the the best for this team is to run the ball through Markel Folks and giving it to Gordon. But you got to run the offense through folks. I think you got to give more folks a little bit more on this plate. And you run the ball through folks and you give the ball to AG. Because I think, not saying that they are these guys, but I think they could be a different version of Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, Lob City. 
of course, like, um, Foles is not the facilitator, not the shooter, and at this point, not the defender that Chris Paul is. And probably Blake Griffin at, at his peak is a little bit more athletic than Aaron Gordon. He's a better shooter than Aaron Gordon. And now Aaron Gordon wants to be uh, known as a shooter, talking about he wants to enter the three-point contest. But, like I said, a different version because Foles is way more athletic than Chris Paul. I mean, because it was a shock when Chris Paul dunked an All-Star game the other night. But I think they could be a more athletic version. And then once, especially when uh, um, Jonathan Isaac comes back, I like the makeup of that team. They still got to get some shooting. They still got to get some, some elite scoring. I know people are talking about bringing in Kelly Oubre. And I don't know how you're going to get that done uh, because you can't move Nikola to Phoenix. Now, maybe if you get a third team involved, they would take Nikola and – they give up something that the Phoenix would like, and then you give up some picks to able to uh to get um Kelly Oubre maybe, but I don't see a way because you you're not you're not gonna give Nikola to to Phoenix because Phoenix is not gonna want Nikola because they got DeAndre Aiden. and to be honest uh if I'm not mistaken I think that uh, uh um Fournier has a player option and. I'd be surprised if he opts in because he knows more than likely if he opts in that more than likely he's going to get traded. Uh, now he, I, his play option is worth seventeen million. So if he thinks he can't get seventeen million on open market, like if I opt in, that's just a basically free lottery ticket to guarantee myself seventeen million dollars. Maybe, but he know more than likely if he cashes in that lottery ticket to get that seventeen million, that by February of next year he'll be playing in a different team and he has no control of where he's going. Because he can get traded. Because only he has definitely doesn't have no trade clause and nothing like that. So he'll end up playing somewhere else that he has no idea. He can be in Phoenix. He can be in Washington. He can be in Seattle. I mean, not Seattle. In, um, Milwaukee. He can be in Toronto. He can be in San Antonio. He, he, he don't know where he can be. He can be a number of places. Um, because he has no control over that. So I think that he'll be weary about cashing in that lottery ticket and opting back into his contract. But... That's a bargaining chip for the for the Magic, but if he doesn't opt in, there's a play that you no longer have to 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 facilitate the trade. So then, what assets do you now have to acquire somebody like a Kelly Oubre or Bradley Beal or Demar Derozan? I'm not really sold on getting Demar Derozan. I mean, I know the West and the, and the East is two different animals, and he probably would look better in the Magic uniform. And he probably would help the Magic more than he's helping Toronto. But I'm looking, I mean, uh, helping uh, um, San Antonio. But I'm just looking like, uh, if you put him over here, I don't really see that much improvement from what, what the Spurs is doing. But I just think that the way this team is ran, and I got to put a lot of some of this on, on Steve Clifford because I. I watch some of these games and I'm looking at Steve Clifford like, what are you doing? Like, what kind of rotation is this? Like, what is you doing? And he's put himself in the, he backed himself into a bad corner because a year ago you were the seventh seed, you won your division and the seventh seed in the playoffs and you won, a play, you won one playoff game but you, uh, you lost a series in five. You're guaranteed this year not to win your division because the, uh, the Heat are fourth or thir third or fourth in these, if I'm not mistaken. One of the two. So you're not going to win the division. So you're going to either be the seventh seed or the eighth seed. And you might even back in with a losing record. Because last year you were 42 and 40. Now you're talking about you might back in at, at like under 500. And be an eighth seed and get swept. Or be a seventh seed again, but a worse seventh seed than you were previously. So you can really back yourself into a corner that your season is not going to be as good as it was last year. So... Now, I'm not saying this season, but I'm saying possibly next year he's going to definitely be on the hot seat, in my opinion. Unless something happens, like they get the seventh seed and they win a play and they win the series. Like they, they, shock, the, they shock the series, win the series, then you cook him with grease. But until something like that happens, and I know some moves got to be made. Like you, you have to do, and I know we were kind of kind of quiet on the trade deadline. We picked up somebody, but we didn't do the moves that people thought that we were going to do. Like, we didn't do the moves that people wanted us to move. But the moves that we made, uh, like the, uh, the move we made for James Ennis, I like James Ennis. Um, for the couple games that he played, I, I like his intensity, uh, his hustle. 
He was flying around the court. Like I, I, I like that type. Of, he's one of those energy type of players. Those are one. Those are the guys on the back end on the rosters that come in off the bench that spark plug stuff up. That 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 type of hustle. Something that that uh, Michael Carl Williams did last year when we got when we picked him up uh, towards the end of the season. I like when we. I think we gave him two ten day contracts. We gave him ten day contract. Then we ended up giving him another ten day contract before we actually gave him a real contract. Uh, to finish out the season, and then you know, of course, we signed them during the off season. We gave them a bigger deal in the off season, and I was all for that. I was kind of iffy on Michael Carter Williams. Um, I worked with a lot of Rocket fans, and I asked how do you, how do you look for the Rockets because I remember him in Philly a little bit when he won Rookie of the Year, but then after that, I know he bounced around, went to Chicago, went to Memphis, went to Charlotte. Uh, not Memphis. Uh, um, Milwaukee went to Charlotte. Then I know he came to Houston. And he played in Houston for a couple games. He said his defense was pretty good. But once I watched him, I'm like, cool. I like I like his hustle. Like he he fight he fighting for a team. He fighting to be home. Like he fighting to have a home. Like he that scrappiness. Same thing I seen out of Josh Hans. Like he's fighting. Like he's fighting to, to be on the roster. And I like that. He's hungry. I agree with that. I like that. And you need those type of dogs and players, especially coming off the bench, uh, um, to help spark plug in a bad situation type game. So I, I I like I like that move. Of course, we wanted to bring in the splash. We wanted to bring in uh um uh a Russell uh a D Lo or bring in a Kelly Oubre or bring in the Devin Booker or bring in uh um a Bradley Beal and somebody of, the, of, the, of that type of ilk. Of course, we wanted that, but do we really have the ammunition? Do people really value players like Aaron Gordon the way we think they value? Because we already know off top the way the, the the progression that we've seen from the beginning of this year to now, folks is untouchable. The way that Jonathan Isaac was playing defense, like if Jonathan Isaac was not hurt, Jonathan Isaac is defensive player of the year hands down. He was number one or number two in every defensive category and metric. He was defensive player of the year hands down. So you don't want to give up on on, on, on Jonathan Isaac either. So then you're looking at the other players. You gave people actually laughing at that Nikola contract. Other teams are laughing and like, I can't believe that the Magic gave Nikola that type of deal. And I said that. I, I wasn't in favor of giving the... I said this going back. I wasn't in favor of signing Nikola to a long-term deal. And like I said, one of the reasons why, I don't think he fits the way this team's makeup is. And like I said, I was, I was hopeful for market folks. I'm glad the progression that he's shown. I wasn't expecting that. Well, especially this this, this up into uh, this far into the season, I wasn't expecting that this soon. I thought it was going to be something that was going to be a longer term project. I'm very pleasantly surprised. I'm I'm extremely excited about what I've seen, especially because I'm about to get see it in person. Because hey, if y'all out here, I might have some Rocket fans. I'm going to the Magic Rocket game uh, March 8th. So if you see your boy in the stands, holla at me, everybody. hey Spence, what's up? Holla at your boy. I'm gonna be at the game. Rocking, ready to watch my team go up and see the small ball in action and see my magic against them. But I'm I'm intrigued at what I've seen so far from him this season, and I and it's somebody that you definitely can build with. And I see him and Jonathan Isaac, and I think Aaron Gordon is in that mix. Those are guys that you can build with. What you're gonna do? Cause you need a, you need a two. How you gonna acquire a two? And you can play without Nikola. You can play with Kim Birch. You can play with um, Mabamba as your starting five. I think actually they, that Kim Birch is actually the better fit to be the starting five, to be honest with you. So we still got the rest of the season to go, and we're going to see exactly how this plays out. But um, part of the problem is that like we need to find an identity. Are we going to play this slow place offense to, to dictate to Nikola's skill sets? Or are we going to play this up and down fast pace push the ball up and down the court with Markel Folks, with Aaron Gordon, because that better suits them. And you need to get the most out of them. Because we keep talking. We, think about this. Gordon is only 24, and if I'm not mistaken, Folks is 20 or 21. These are some young guys. They ain't their prom yet. Like, they, Gordon is four years to his prom, and Markel is six years, seven years to his prom. Like, these guys, you hit your prom 26, 27, 28 29, 30, like that's when people hit their prom. So they ain't even hit their prom yet. So we can't give up on these players this year. And I know anybody talking about giving up on Marco folks. Yeah, everybody's intrigued with him. So we're going to see what happens the rest of the season. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. If you haven't commented below, if you haven't clicked that bell to get more videos, more magic videos will be dropping soon. I holla.